Thank you so much, uh, Congresswoman Strickland, for your invitation to be here, for your leadership in the Congress on so many subjects, and for your kind introduction. It's an honor to be here with you, with Chairman Sturd. I thought you were going to do a prayer, so I, I'm taking the words that you said earlier as there a prayer. Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful because he called us to action and established values and priorities in his comments. Willie Frank the third. I mean, thank you so much for this. And can you imagine how exciting it's going to be to have a statue to his father in the, in the capital of the United States? It's going to be so great. Thank you to the state of Washington for making that possible because they, you decide who represents you in, in the uh, Congress, but also in the Statuary Hall. Uh, Don Anderson, thank you so much for making this bipartisan. The bill is bipartisan. It's the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill. Thank you for making the implementation of it and the acknowledgement of it bipartisan as well today. Representative Kilmer, uh, well, I'll talk more about all of, uh, about them, but thank you uh, for your relentless, persistent, dissatisfied, and constant uh, advocacy for Puget Sound. And I know that you and Congresswoman Strickland are the co-chairs of the Puget Sound. We'll talk more as we go forward on that. Here's the thing, though, that I want to, I was keeping it with me. <laughs> I want you to know I have my fish, too, that the... Uh, that I received last night, right, from Tulalip. Yeah. the Tulalip tribe. Tulalip tribe. Tulalip last tribe. night, yes. Yep. So here's the thing. When we, th we have long overdue needed, uh, for a long time needed an infrastructure bill, the fact that it's bipartisan is so positive for us because it's always been bipartisan. Over time, for gener forever when we did an infrastructure bill, it was always bipartisan. So when the president Biden's leadership to say we're going big with this bill. Now, he had in his value system of all of this that it would be have environmental justice and respect for indigenous rights and all the rest as part of the bill. He has a 40% justice piece in the bill. So that people who are concerned about all the infrastructure they built before divide up my neighborhood, we're still living with the concept. We said, no, that's not what this is. This is not about dividing. This is about uniting. This is about uniting. And well, I might just want to say that in terms of the state of uh, Washington, the bill is very um, appropriately generous. $5.3 billion to fix roads and bridges, some of which will be part of this. $1.9 billion to upgrade public transit. $71 million for electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, again, the bigger bill has $13 billion to help tribal communities. Now, let me just say, when we, just, when we said we were going to do an infrastructure bill, we said to Indian country, we want you at this table on the very first day. We don't want to present you with something and say, what do you think of this, and oh, it's too late to make any changes. We needed them to be there the very first day because they have been keepers of the land, whether it's water rights or whatever, or, or sacred grounds or all the rest, we want it to be in front of all of that when we wrote the bill. So it's no coincidence that you are here, both of you, both of your tribes here today telling us the story of the history of it all and how it will be enhanced as we go forward. But I, I do have to salute President Biden for insisting from the start that that would be the way we would go down this path. So again, we talk about the natural beauty of the South Sound. We talk about Chamber Creek. I know it has a more official name, but Chambers Creek. And it's, it's really very exciting to be here. I mean, I'm 11 hours ahead of you all, <laughs> or behind. I'm not sure which, but it's 11 hours difference. Uh, but I couldn't be uh, more honored uh, than to see us right here in this beautiful beautiful place of nature with the family. Thank you to the family uh, for, for what you have, um, the Beller family, for gifting the dam to the local environmental groups. For Tara, for Tara here, to see for Tara. And um, th thank you so much. So it takes, it's public, it's private, it's nonpartisan, it's bipartisan, and the rest 
it's very, very important. And you know, you're a model to the country. A model to the country. So let me uh, praise uh, Derek Kilmer, he's chair of the Modernization Committee. He had this idea that Congress should be modernized, and he's the chair of the committee that we established to do just that. Gives him a seat at the chair's table. Very, very respected in the Congress. And as I said, as we know, alongside Representative Kilmer, the Puget Sound Recovery Recovery Caucus. And again, he's on the Appropriations Committee. We call it the Almighty Powerful Appropriations <laughs> Committee on the Environmental Subcommittee that has so much to do with all of this. And again, to um, uh, Chairman Estera, uh, the, you, I thank you for reminding us of the history, the heritage, and the sanctity of this land. Chairman Willie Frank, thank you for highlighting the human and cultural aspects at stake in this fight. And again, we look forward to welcoming your father uh, to the Capitol and as many friends. Council Member Don Anderson, thank you for bringing the spirit of bipartisanship to this important occasion. This remarkable backdrop reminds us of America's collective obligation to care for nature's life-giving wonders. The health and livelihood of working families depend on good stewardship. That is why we're so pleased that in the infrastructure bill, we have Davis Bacon so that we have good paying jobs to our friends in labor. Thank you for that. Again, there is a billion dollars that was referenced by uh, uh, Derek Kilmer, but a billion dollars to cure culvert blockages and restore fish passage. That came from you all. That you saw that need and that we had to commit that res those resources. And again, $172 billion to conserve Pacific salmon and $89 to pr million to protect Puget Sound. Now, that, that may not sound like a $89 million. We are scrambling for money for San Francisco Bay. Chesapeake Bay, how did this all happen? Puget Sound is leading the way in how to use federal dollars uh, to preserve the critical habitats, uh, build a stronger, cleaner infrastructure, and the rest. And it is, um, infrastructure is about health. It's about clean air and clean water by, what did I say, transit systems, $1.9 billion to upset transit. Cleaner air for our children to breathe. Cleaner water, getting the lead out across the country. Cleaner water for our children to drink. So it's a health issue. It's an environmental issue, of course, as we do so in an environmentally sound way. It's a commercial issue. How we get product to market, to and from market in a way that uh, pr promotes commerce. It promotes commerce, and for us it's a values issue as well because all of this is to help us preserve the planet as we fight the climate crisis, and Washington State has been so in the lead in all of that. It's a quality of life that parents taking their children to school or people going to work and the rest are in the car less or maybe taking public transit more, but whatever it is, it's saving time for families, so it's a quality of life issue. It's very, very important. The first infrastructure bill was uh, introduced by President Thomas Jefferson over 200 years ago. It was to build the infrastructure, the Erie Canal, Cumberland Road, to build into the new country, the Louisiana Purchase, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. A hundred years later, in honor of the 100th year anniversary, Teddy Roosevelt did his infrastructure bill. It was called the National Park Service, establishing that in a way and recognizing that this infrastructure bill combines all of that and takes us beautifully in the future, again, with environmental justice, with commercial success, with respect uh, for the cultural heritage of it all. So I think you've captured it all right here today. It's exciting to be here with it, with all of you as we do this. And it's now my privilege again to yield back to a respected voice in that, the former mayor, who know, and there are mayors here today, are there? <laughs> mayors, thank you for being here. Okay. <laughs> my father was mayor and my brother was mayor right. of Baltimore, so I'm partial to mayors, because I know that's how you get job work done. <laughs> um, and she's been a tireless advocate 
right from the start, effective from the start in this regard. And here we are to celebrate this a magnificent uh, achievement, but also the great leadership of Congresswoman Strickland and Congressman uh, uh, Phil Kilmer, as well as Maria Cantwell and the, all of your congressional delegation. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be with you. Thank